Hi, everyone. Uh, we are getting ready to begin. Uh, the people on stage here have some very important news to tell you. And we will start the way we always do. I would like to ask um, the Vice President for Health Sciences and Technology and the Executive Director of the Research Institute, Michael J. Friedlander, to take the microphone. Can we have a please have a big welcome for him? Thank you all very much and good morning. I'm going to take these gloves off. I hope I made a good decision. My hands were pretty cold. Welcome everyone, including those here in the audience and everyone who is watching from their computers anywhere out there in the ether as well. Thank you for being here on what is an historic day for Virginia Tech, the city of Roanoke, and our emerging VTC Academic Health Center. Before we begin, I'd like to thank some of our incredible partners in the audience here this morning. If you serve on a board at Virginia Tech, at Carillion, the Research Institute, or the School of Medicine, would you please stand so we can show our appreciation. <clears throat> Thank you. And if any of you in the audience serve as an in an elected office for our nation, our state, Roanoke, or any of our neighboring communities, would you please stand as well so we can appreciate and acknowledge you. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Michael Friedlater with a J. That's right, you heard it. <clears throat> I'm Virginia Tech's Vice President for Health Sciences and Technology and the Executive Director of the Research Institute, which you've already heard. It's my great honor to kick this program off today, which also features Virginia Tech President Tim Sands, Carillion Clinic President and CEO Nancy Howell Agee, Roanoke Mayor Sherman Lee, Research Professor and Distinguished Research Scholar Sharon Ramey, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, and of course, Haywood Fralin and the entire Fralin family. We stand here on a campus that is a centerpiece <clears throat> for an amazing story of rejuvenation and discovery happening right here in Roanoke right now. Some 10 years ago, this was an aging industrial district, as many of you know. It's exactly the type of thriving knowledge economy environment that cities all over our nation are striving to develop now. The number of people working right here on the VTC Health Sciences and Technology Campus at the moment is approaching 2,000. We're projected to increase that to over 5,000 within just a few short years. I may be biased. Okay, I'm biased. <laughs> but the caliber of people working on this campus is absolutely extraordinary. They are doing groundbreaking biomedical and health sciences research in areas of tremendous need, saving lives, improving the quality of life, and giving real hope to families based on rigorous scientifically validated discovery. Things like addiction, neuropsychiatric disorders, cerebral palsy, cancers, brain injuries, obesity and diabetes, heart disease, infections and autoimmune disorders are amongst the topics that these outstanding researchers are addressing on a daily basis. These are the types of health challenges that we all face every day, right here in Roanoke, throughout the state, across the nation, and across the entire globe. We're making real progress to lessen the incidence of the occurrence of these disorders, to effectively treat them when they do occur, and to achieve healthier lives for children, adults, the elderly. Thanks to the Fralin family, whose truly amazing, inspiring, and record-setting generosity we are here to celebrate today. Our progress will accelerate dramatically in the coming years. The benefits of this generosity will impact the entire world as discoveries made right here in Roanoke have their impact. Virginia is a, and in Roanoke, Virginia, and will be applied in ways that improve the health of individuals and communities everywhere. After all, biomedical discovery and innovation truly have no boundaries. I'm confident that 10 years from now, people will look back on today as a watershed moment for transformational breakthroughs 
for the continued success of this city, this region, and the entire state. I hope you share my excitement and my deep gratitude to the Freylands for their amazing support of what we are doing here. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Tim Sands, Virginia Tech's president. His support and vision have been major factors in making today possible. Tim is truly a visionary leader. It's not only an honor to work at Virginia Tech, it is a pleasure and fun to work for Tim Sands. In case you hadn't noticed lately, there's rarely, if ever, a dull day at Virginia Tech. <laughs> That's the way we like it. Please join me in welcoming Virginia Tech's President Tim Sands. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It is a great day. It's uh, all, every day is a great day as a Hokie. Uh, we're just glad to be here and to celebrate this wonderful moment. Haywood and Cynthia, thank you for giving us something remarkable to celebrate today. This is more than a gift. You are supporting our vision for the future for, of this city, the region, and our university. Together with the Horace G. Freyland Charitable Trust, you have committed $50 million to Virginia Tech in support of research at what will become with great pride and gratitude, what we will call the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute. Thank you. <laughs> this is the most generous gift that Virginia Tech has ever received. What you've done is historic and it will be transformational. Thank you. I can't overstate the importance of what is happening in this city. I know what the, this campus means to Roanoke and to the Commonwealth and as a whole. Mayor Lee and Governor Northam will talk about that shortly. I'm gonna take a moment to talk about what this means for Virginia Tech. We are Virginia's global land-grant research university. That's a big responsibility and we welcome it. We take pride in being a top 25 public research university, but we want to go further. We believe we can best serve Virginia and the nation by advancing as a top global university. The key to that goal is research and discovery. Research is at the core of our university mission and, and our vision. And this campus is a centerpiece of the research environment that is rapidly elevating the profile, our profile, in biomedical discovery. Virginia Tech exists to improve the lives and communities in our communities by using knowledge to solve problems and some of humanity's greatest challenges that exist in the realm of the biomedical sciences. Discoveries in this field save lives and improve the quality of life. They will change the world in which our children and grandchildren live. There is no better or more powerful way to serve humanity. Haywood and Cynthia, your faith in our work inspires and empowers us. It expands our horizons, opens up new possibilities for the years to come. Your investment in the Institute in Virginia Tech will be transformational. It will have an immediate impact as we begin to recruit world-leading researchers to help fill up the new building that's under construction next to us right now. And we can only imagine the impact those researchers will make. Their discoveries will, will really touch the world, and they will begin right here in Roanoke, thanks to you. It is now my pleasure to introduce someone who has been an invaluable leader and partner in the work that is transforming Roanoke and will accelerate dramatically starting today. Please join me in welcoming Carilion Clinic President and CEO, Nash, Nancy Howell Agee. Thank you, Tim. What a great day. I have to tell you, hey Wood, my phone has blown up this morning. You know, as head of one of Virginia's largest private employers, and as now one of the leading health systems in the nation, I know how important it is to have a clear mission, a strategic vision, and having strong partners who can make it all happen. 
Carillion's roots go back more than 100 years, about the same time as the founding of the city, Mr. Mayor. And my predecessor, Tom Robertson, dreamed of bringing the Roanoke Valley and the New River Valleys together and dreamed of a research-focused region. And my predecessor, Ed Murphy, and the former president of Virginia Tech, Charlie Steger, dreamed of a school of medicine and a research institute that were the best in the nation, and it's happened. And today, we carry forward with a bold and transformative gift, the inspiration for where we're going to be 20 years from now, 50 years from now. How exciting is that? The strong partnership that we have had with Virginia Tech has made it possible for us together to make a far greater impact on this region than either of us could have done alone. Besides improving health, education, and research, our partnership has been a catalyst for economic growth. And I can't tell you how cool it is just to watch it all unfold from my office window. A future that we're seeing unfolding right here in Roanoke with innovation, new ideas, things that are born right here. So on behalf of Carillion, I want to say thank you to Cynthia and to Haywood, to the whole family. Your gift is so incredibly important, and I'm not sure we can appreciate even today just how transformative it will be. Research is vitally important to advancing health care. Similarly, knowledge and discovery have become essential ingredients to advancing the economic health of cities. So for all these reasons, this is a great day for Roanoke, for Virginia Tech, for Carillion, for all of us. It's now my pleasure to turn the podium over to someone who has as much to do with the positive transformation of our beloved city and our region as Mayor Lee Sherman. Mr. Mayor, please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. And I have to say it again, this is a great day. <laughs> Not only for the region, but for the city of Roanoke. And I'm proud to be here with my colleagues on city council as we recognize this great day and gift from Hayward. Well, let me say good morning. And as always, I like to point out that the only Roanoke is the only seven time all-American city in the country. When people ask me how we have accomplished so much, the answer is very easy. We work together in collaborative partnerships and share our successes. There's no better example than Hayward Freeland to, to prove that. Hayward is one of Roanoke's greatest champions. He has grown up here and he never forgets his hometown. Whether he's working in Richmond or Washington, D.C., we know he is working to grow and strengthen our community and our economy. And I tell you, he's a very special man to me. I just want to tell you one little side story. I'll take privilege as mayor to say that. I was at City Hall, and I got a call to come down to a community meeting because there were some parents and some coaches, and folks were upset about the policies that we had enacted about youth athletics. So I'm going down, bracing up, getting ready to hear it. And when I got down at the Gainsborough Library, the first person I saw was Hayward Franklin, sitting there talking about the importance of working together, our kids uh, participating in sports and athletics and staying in school. That's somebody that's committed 
to the community. He didn't have to do that, but he was right there in the middle of it, and I thank him for that. His support of the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute here at VTC is a fantastic example. He is transforming Roanoke's economy and supporting work that will address our top health care problems. What an exciting day to be part of this special moment for the new Fralin Biomedical Research Institute. And having set the stage for the creation of a new business, new business opportunity for many years to come, the city is delighted to support this transition. And we are confident that the enhancement of research and education associated with this project will elevate the quality of life in our region and help us all to be stronger and healthier. We want you to know, Hayward, that the people of Roanoke are proud to be partners at your side. And we hope that this great partnership will continue to help provide health, education, and awareness to all of our citizens. Congratulations, Virginia Tech Carillion, on your growth. And for people of Roanoke, please stay tuned because it's going to keep getting better. God bless you. Thank you today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could you remind me again how many times we've been elected All-American City? <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor, for your leadership and your consistent and complete support for the Research Institute. The Fralin Biomedical Research Institute is highly interdisciplinary, creating knowledge at the boundaries of disciplines across the life sciences, the physical sciences, the social sciences, and engineering in order to invent new and improve ways to deliver health care and promote healthier lives, including preventing, treating, and curing disease, and training the biomedical research workforce of the future. The scientists here are doing some of society's most important work, making deep inroads into disorders that manifest across the lifespan and improving health for all. In the process, they've won over $150 million in research grants. They've generated over $400 million in economic impact for this community. They have also started several new companies and formed research partnerships with industries around the world while embracing the community in which we all have become deeply embedded and being embraced by it as well. The wonderful gift from Haywood Fralin and the Fralin family not only provides financial resources that will be used to attract and retain research talent to the Institute, it also sends a message across the entire country and the world that something magical is happening here in Roanoke. Believe me, our colleagues at some of the leading academic health centers and universities in major cities across the country are now hearing that message and they want to know more about the possibilities here. It is also incredibly motivational to the hardworking, outstanding research team leaders who have already come to Roanoke from across the globe, providing the kind of fuel that everyone needs to get through those long days and nights in the lab and tackling numerous grant deadlines. And while we're on the subject, <clears throat> the subject of research team leaders, that is, I want to make sure to say, to acknowledge the people in the teams, the many team members, the researchers, the research associates, the technicians, the administrators, and the students, many of whom are from this area, and many of whom work tirelessly to make all this happen. It really is team effort, completely. This type of major gift provided by Haywood Fralin catalyzes a discovery and stimulates economic output and motivates those teams of researchers, I guarantee you. Haywood is not only a tremendously successful businessman, philanthropist, and community leader, He's an accomplished student of human behavior, I have learned, <clears throat> who knows well how to make strategic investments and give an outstanding return, including in people such as these leading scientists who have already been recruited to Roanoke. One of those spectacularly successful and dedicated researchers who helped us launch the Research Institute and put it on the global stage of biomedical and health sciences innovation hubs is Sharon Ramey, 
who beginning this year will lead the nation's first pediatric stroke trials based on the innovative interventions for treating cerebral palsy that she and her colleague Stephanie DeLuca developed right here at the Research Institute in Roanoke. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend, Sharon Rainey. Now you're up, Sharon. I bring immense gratitude uh, from the scientists who are hard charging and working themselves to the limits to advance the frontiers of science here at our institute. And today I'm going to share just a bit of the type of discoveries that we're making and that will accelerate with today's transformational gift. In the Human Development Lab and in our Neuromotor Research Clinic, in collaboration with the Human Neuroimaging Lab, we've been testing the limits of what we can do to improve children's health, well-being, and lifetime achievement. Last week, we had coverage worldwide about an article that shows investing in early childhood education for the first five years of life results not only in doing better in school and going to college and holding jobs and voting in elections and having savings accounts, but we showed unexpectedly and importantly that these children who had a solid foundation make decisions differently and with greater sensitivity to other people. These individuals care about fairness. They are distressed by social inequity. They make decisions that don't just benefit them, but benefit everyone in a social sense. This is when they are in their 40s, and we're going to follow them as they continue to age. We think a finding like that is one that causes all of us to come together and think about what we do as a society with news like that to strengthen our democracy in the world. Secondly, we do high-intensity interventions based on the same principles of learning and memory and social interaction and brain development that undergirded the early education, the same basic laboratory findings have been applied to children with neuromotor impairment. And not only do we get them controlling their arm and their hand, we get spillover effects that make us rethink the, how the brain works. Children begin to talk. They think better. Children with behavior problems become more cooperative. We want to know what's going on in their brains and how we are helping reshape after unfortunate major brain trauma. Our new trial will have us here at our new Fralin Biomedical Research Institute train therapists around the nation to treat hundreds of children who have a stroke before they're 28 days old. And there currently is no form of rehabilitation that helps those children. We will be testing this and hopefully within four to five years have an answer. And if the treatment we've developed for older children works for babies and babies with stroke, it will become the standard of care. So I'm so proud to work with and lead groups like this and to learn from my colleagues. The hum in the hall at this institute is something. It's the most exciting place I've ever been, and I've been at other great universities. So thank you for your optimism, your belief in the future, your trust in us, and offering us security so that we stay here and want to keep hard charging every day. Thank you.
Thank you, Sharon. The life-changing work of, with you and your colleagues are doing, that you and your colleagues are doing, is one of the reasons that we're here today. I mean, the uh, impact of four decades or more of persistence results in profound results that uh, I think just really change your view of everything. And that's what this research institute is about. It's an important day for Virginia. The Fralin family's support for the research institute will have a really incredible impact across the Commonwealth. Advancing biomedical research is something any governor would appreciate. But our, gov our governor is not just any governor. Our governor understands the importance of research and the impact it can have on the lives of Virginians. Because he also happens to be a physician, he is particularly well qualified to speak about the value of medical discoveries. Governor Ralph Northam is also a true champion for higher education and its ability to ensure that Virginia remains the best place in the country to work and live. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency, the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Ralph Northam. Thank you, Jim. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. What an exciting day this is for Roanoke and for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and it's just a a true pleasure for me to be here representing the Commonwealth on uh, this announcement day, such a gracious contribution that the Fraylin family is making to Carilion and the uh, Research Institute. We, we can't thank you enough. So uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. President Sands, thank you for the kind introduction and, and your leadership at Virginia Tech. Go Hokies, uh, what, 15 straight years now? So uh, <laughs> there's always next year, right? <laughs> Dr. Freelander, thank you for your leadership here and your, your words. Nancy, it has been a tremendous pleasure working with you uh, at, at Carilion and, and just what's happening here in, in Roanoke and, and all of your work across this country now is, is commendable. So we appreciate all that you do. Mayor Lee, it's always good to be here in the Star City. Uh, and I agree with you, great things are happening here in Roanoke. and. Uh, Thank you for your leadership. I know I've looked around. We have a lot of other elected officials here uh, this morning, both at the local level and the state level. And I just wanted on behalf of the Commonwealth to thank all of you for your service uh, to Virginia. I, I remind people that this is not the easiest time to be an elected official, but I really believe with the challenges that we have not only here in Virginia, but across this country, it's the most important time. So, so thanks for all that you do. And, and finally, Sharon, I, what exciting words uh, you had at the podium. And I, I just have to tell you, as a, a child neurologist, the, the projects that you're working on, first to start with early childhood education, uh, we are uh, intending to make sure that all of our children across the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, have access to early childhood education. It's, it's really what, what creates or, or prevents the the gap between the haves and the have-nots. So uh, that is exciting work. And then your, your pediatric stroke uh, research that you're, you're doing. And I guess just to sum all this up, it's an exciting time. I saw some students here a little bit earlier. Just a, an exciting time to be going into health care. But, um, you know, I have three years left as governor. And uh, just a, a hint, I, I need a job in three years. So, <laughs> so I have to. We always have to take care of business. <laughs> you know, our goal in uh, Virginia is, is very simple. It's to make sure that, that all Virginians have a job that they can support themselves and their families with. We want Virginia to be the number one state in this great country of ours uh, in which to, to do business. And one of the challenges that we have uh, seen across the Commonwealth is that no one region should be solely dependent on one industry. And so with some urgency, we have really tried to diversify our economy. And what a great way to transform the city of Roanoke by bringing in talent. And you know, back in 2007, Virginia Tech and Carilion had the vision to do just that in a public-private 
partnership to, to invest. And it does take responsible investment, but to bring talent into this area. And as you all know, talent attracts other talent. And, and with that talent comes grant opportunities, research and development opportunities, and then the growth of other businesses that develop around that talent. And so this has truly and will continue to be a model for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And it is just something that, that all of you should be proud of. And so to continue this transformation, to have a, just a, such a generous and gracious contribution from the Fraylin family, the, the largest contribution, $50 million, uh, that will be used so well in, in Roanoke to, to really continue the mission, the vision that was started back in, in 2007. And again, at the end of the day, uh, to make sure that every person in Virginia has a job that they can support themselves and their families with. So an exciting day for Roanoke. It's also an exciting day for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And as, as we say, it takes a village to build something special. And I am just so glad to the Fraylin family that you have chosen to be such a large part of such an important village. So thank you so much for your generosity. And on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia, I, I wish everybody in here and across Virginia a very safe, a happy, and peaceful holiday season. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for your kind words and support, Governor Northam. It is now my great honor to introduce a man whose family and personal legacy of support to Roanoke and higher education across Virginia is simply astounding. Haywood Freeland is chairman of Medical Facilities of America and a powerful advocate for education and economic development. He chairs the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia. He served as the previous Governor's Commission on Higher Education Reform, Innovation, and Investment. He serves as a member of the Virginia Growth and Opportunity, that's the Go Virginia Board, as well as a member of the Virginia Research Investment Committee or, Committee, or VREC. He's a former member of the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors and former rector of the Board of Visitors at his alma mater, the University of Virginia. He has chaired the Virginia Business Council along with his wife, Cynthia. He's a namesake of UVA's Freeland Art Museum, and he serves as vice chair of the Taubman Museum of Art. His brother, the late Horace Fraylin, and Horace's wife, Anne, were the namesakes of Virginia Tech's Fraylin Life Sciences Institute. Truly, all of Virginia is better for the Fraylin family. Haywood, on behalf of all of us here today, thank you so very much. Please come up. I love these podiums that go up. <laughs> About to mess up the microphone. That's all right. Put it down a little bit. Thank you all for those kind comments. I'm not sure they're that well deserved, but I very much appreciate them. And to the governor in Virginia Tech, congratulations for securing Amazon's location in Northern Virginia. You are both critical to the selection process, and you both improve the lives of Virginians in many ways on a daily basis, and we thank you. As just noted, I did attend the University of Virginia, but I've always had great respect for Virginia Tech and for its mission of Uprosum that I may serve. It was a great honor to serve seven years on the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors, 
And I used to kid my friends at the University of Virginia Board of Visitors that I learned everything I knew about Board of Visitor Governance at Virginia Tech. <laughs> my two older brothers did attend Virginia Tech, and when it came time for me to go to college and I chose the University of Virginia, my mother asked, why do you want to do that? <laughs> And I guess the reason is I just wanted to be different from my two brothers. <laughs> Much later in life, my older brother Horace created a charitable trust and he appointed me the trustee. When he developed terminal cancer, we had a serious conversation about the administration of the trust. He told me that when making gifts, he wanted to consider two things. First, he wanted the gifts to make a significant difference. And secondly, he wanted the gifts to benefit a majority of the citizens of the Roanoke Valley. He also, with a wink of the eye, reminded me that when making gifts, remember, he didn't attend the University of Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> this gift to Virginia Tech Foundation fits both charges. A supporting an academic health center will help to raise the income levels of all of the citizens of the Roanoke Valley. And it will help change the future of Roanoke. In fact, an argument can be made that the development of an academic health center here will have far more impact than the location of the Norfolk and Western offices here many years ago. You've probably noticed, as I have, that the projects that Virginia Tech is involved in usually perform quite well. Hotel Roanoke is a terrific example, the renovation of Hotel Roanoke. But I want to remind everybody that there was widespread enthusiasm and community support for that project. If we unite to advance this project, like we did the renewal of Hotel Roanoke, we can be as, as successful or even more successful than the academic health center that we visited several months ago at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. There, in the 1960s, that academic health center occupied five and a half square blocks in downtown Birmingham. Today, it occupies 105 square blocks and has an annual economic impact of $7 billion. We know that Virginia Tech and Carillion will do their job and that they'll do it well. Their vision has the power to reshape the Roanoke skyline for the next 25 years and more. The state government has already provided tremendous assistance toward the backing of this goal. But the backing of the local governments and the community will be essential. The ultimate degree of success, however, depends on all of us, our philanthropy, and our support. We must all think outside the box to address the challenges to the project, including improvements to the area infrastructure that will ultimately lead to better roads, better air service for a stronger region. There will be many more companies and many more jobs and higher salaries. I can't end without commenting on the quality of the researchers at this institute. They are world class and they are making life changing discoveries, as earlier said, on a regular basis. They could be performing their research anywhere, but they choose to be here. Just to give you one example of how world class and, and effective they are. The major source, I'm gonna give you one example, the major source of funding, and you probably know this, of all academic health centers throughout the nation is the National Institute of Health. Uh, that's true here as well. It funds about 85% of, um, of this research institute. The average percentage of acceptance of applications for grants nationwide, it runs somewhere between six and nine percent. 
Here, the average acceptance rate is 29% and could be 34% this year. That is off the charts. It's not an accident. They're that good. Cynthia and I individually and the Charitable Trust have bought into the vision that this growing academic health center fueled by world-class research is the future of this region. It is a one-time opportunity to benefit every citizen of this region. We are maximizing our effort and we encourage everybody to become part of the team. We have a jewel here. Hundreds of millions of dollars have already been spent by the Commonwealth of Virginia, by Virginia Tech, and by Carillion. But it needs the support of all of us as well. Just for one example, this building under construction, it will take $54 million just to equip it. It will take millions more to hire the world-class researchers that perform the research in the new building. And also remember, this is just the first of what we hope to be many research buildings. At the same time, Carillion plans numerous building additions to the clinical component of the Academic Health Center. Without question, this is a major undertaking. But folks, together we can do this. Let's get started. Comment Haywood mentioned uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham. We're in the process of trying to recruit a few folks from there right now and bring some of that money over here. So. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Haywood. Haywood, uh, would you mind coming back up? Cynthia also and uh, President Sands, uh, would you please step forward so we can officially unveil the plaque for the new building? Governor? Okay, somewhere down there, there, okay, there's a tab. And uh, Cynthia, I think perhaps one on your side as well. And so, uh, three, two, one, go. I will, I will read the plaque uh, for the audience who can't get close enough. It reads, the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute, named in honor of Haywood and Cynthia Fralin and the Horace G. Fralin Charitable Trust for generously sharing energy, leadership, and resources for biomedical research, economic development, and better health for the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia and the world. Thank you so much. We want to thank everybody for attending uh, to watch History in the Making this morning. We invite you now to join us in the lobby across the way over at the Research Institute. It's that one, not the new one yet. That building's not ready, so <laughs> hang tight. Uh, and it gives us great pride to say this. Join us at the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute. Thank you all very much.